time doing that. Um, that would be a bonded project going out a, a year. But I'm running down this list. Um, the maintenance facility at Perez Park is out there. That might slip a year or two. There is thought about a, a synthetic turf field at Perez Park. I think that would be the lacrosse soccer field as you drive in on the left side. There's always a thought to do that and, and light it, and, and there would be an alternate high school um, facility as well. Uh, but in this current year coming up, we do need fence replacing at the Little League Complex, Vets Park and Perez Park. We have some very old rusty fence with sharp top edges, and, um, and it, they've been out there for a long time. It needs some replacing. Mm -hmm. There's some liability to that as well. And we do need a large area mower. That I think was, no, that wasn't in the, in the plan last week. Um, but this is a $95,000 mower. It's, I believe, 16 feet wide, 19 feet wide. It's a big, wide one. It's what they do the big fields with, mm -hmm. back and forth. And it's their workhorse. It's the one they're on every other day, if not every day, um, banging out all the fields, Little League Complex, Vets, Bride Brook, um, so many fields that we have in town. If you're still sharing with that with the Board of Ed field, they it? have some, and there is talk about the next time they need a mower to maybe deny that and start using it together. Right now they have it, and they're not asking for equipment. So the next time, I think this will cover that need. Yeah, yeah. and they don't have well, they have the backfields. Yeah, the backfields up top. At, at top, the and then they have the baseball field. Right. And I don't think they would use this fine mower on the, what's that field behind Flanders? Oh, um, Doyle property. Doyle, thank yeah. you, I never remember that. Mm. But some of the, like even the behind Flanders, there's a lot of grass there. Yeah. They'll be turned into synthetic when we go to the Miracle League not, field, yeah. but uh, soon enough. So flipping the page, CNRE, just townwide projects, we always tuck money aside because things come up. We reduce that significantly in this coming year um, just because of the uh, economics of the, of the budget uh, this year. We put just $27,000 into it. Uh, there is a dredging, uh, no, a, a townwide accounting software. We're operating, Anna and the Board of Ed are operating on um, accounting software that is way past its prime our auditors every year come to us with the audit and say, guys, you got to get on a new accounting software. We're doing a lot of things manually and a lot of re-entering of numbers in different places that should be done automatically. Interfacing with the Board of Ed is important too. I know you spent most of your day on this project today, right? Yes, Didn't you have a, yes. um, it would a seminar? totally changed the way yeah. we're currently conducting business. I mean, we would, um, with this system, we could email our employees their check stubs. So it would wow. just be a, a, an entirely yeah. different world of doing things. We wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be paying the, the check stop. I mean, so it, it's, it would be some yeah. major changes. So it's a half million dollars just for the software? <clears throat> Yeah, half a million dollars for the software, Mark's asking. Yeah, and yeah. so it's it's all the different modules we would need. Um, so it's the, the software appl application modules, the training that we would need for our staff, and um, the training. Probably Board of Ed has its own, or not. So this, this would be for the entire package. That's okay. why I put it in townwide. So it would also include the water and sewer utility billing package. Cool. So, you know, we'd have to look at some form of um, allocation there. Yeah, and I mean, it would it would be a 24-month process to get everything up and running. So for each component part, like one part is the general ledger, the second part is payroll, and then the third part is utility billing. So, you know, once we get this all approved yeah. on our end, we would have um, a project meeting with the vendor, and we would set up a schedule for how this would play out. So we'd start like the general ledger first, and maybe when we get in month six of that process, we'd start with payroll. So it, the starts to each component part would be staggered. You're not using Excel spreadsheets now, right? <laughs> well, we are, but yeah. are you? Yeah. Really. For what? <coughs> no. Current accounting system. Uh, <coughs> no. No. no, no, we do. It's uh, 
yeah and i i mean but, but it's antiquated. it's it's no, yes it's on uh, the 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 screens the look time. completely different so i what i've learned yeah yeah very expensive right half that's, a million dollars yeah, what funny. i've learned <laughs> is that that's not the expense the expense is the annual fee and that's yeah. where they're going to get us right with 500,000 and an annual fee oh yeah well, for right. the first year, yeah, there, you know, you don't, you're not paying the fee, but then years right. after that, and yeah. we'd have to really evaluate that. But well, I mean, one of the things um, that the system would be able to do for us is do automated um, all the recalculations for us when we have retroactive wages that are due as a result of when we, you know, I mean, that in itself, I mean, the hours that we put yeah. into doing those yeah. calcs because we have to do it all manually. This, this would be amazing. Yeah, there's there's people that all day are just making corrections. So, you know. and, and even the way that you make corrections in the system, it's yeah. just gonna be I mean, an entirely different yeah. way and to really get us automated. So automation reduces risk and error, but it'd really be nice when this does come above is you know, what is the benefit of it? Quantifiable if possible. Yeah. You know, to just say it's going to be more efficient mm. is for a $500,000 investment and then a yearly fee on top of that. It's what is the, mm -hmm. what is the benefit, both financially and or staffing, whatever it may be. There has to be some benefit to where you bring automation in. And it doesn't have to be elimination of people, but it has to be something that justifies taking the laborious work off of Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Your staff. Right. Absolutely. So there's, um, you're right. We had, <laughs> we had a laborious, a laborious conversation last night at Board of <laughs> uh, Finance, and, and that should be no surprise. Um, but but uh, th there's efficiency, there's monetary efficiency, and then there's the, the cost of doing business, uh, frankly, that if we're the last town using this kind of software that everybody's kind of moved and our auditor is begging us to get into the software that is appropriate. And then there's, you know, we are handling taxpayers' money. We have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure we're accounting properly. And, uh, you know, I don't want to, Anna does an amazing job and her staff does an amazing job, but it's still a ticking, it's a, as my friend Tom Gardner would say about the police station, it's a smoldering crisis. It's an issue that eventually is going to have consequences something if you don't yeah. have the right equipment. Well, uh, no doubt. And something with software, when's the existing software going to stop being serviced by whoever we get it from? That's another reason to justify replacing it. Because eventually, you know, software doesn't get supported forever. So the, the software that we do have, we do pay an annual maintenance on that now. Um, and it, I mean, of course, it's it's a lesser amount than yeah. we'll you know we'll be paying with this new system. However, um, they do constantly do updates, but the type of software that it is is not as automated as we could have, and what we're looking to go to. Okay. So that's out there, and we're we're working. We've been uh, that's been sliding. So is that coming this year? It's in the 1920 plan. So next year. Yeah, well, we're, we're starting to get um, uh, bids or, or to talk to companies, and, and we'll be looking for bids in the coming year. Um, and uh, yes, something that uh, is, is going to be out there. And something the Board of Finance, good night, gentlemen. Something the Board of Finance has been actually uh, requesting us to put in, and, and uh, although they'll, again, probably discuss this uh, ad nauseum, it's it's important and they will get it right and we will have this program so but more coming again it will go through an acquisition pro uh, process and you will hear more about that uh, lastly the education uh, department uh, it, I'll just go over the current request they need a telephone upgrade in the middle school uh, forty thousand dollars the main parking lot repayment at the middle school is thirty thousand sidewalk repair and they're coordinating the paving with our with our public works because we'll have contractors in town so we're going to see some savings there it would be more expensive sidewalk repairs to the middle school and the high school um, is chipping away you know when you get off the the turnabout at the high school just picture that the curbing is breaking away a little bit and there's some spots in the in the um, sidewalks that need fixing as well 
Um, it stuff adds up. Um, maintenance of vehicle acquisition. What is that, Anna? So, um, so the board of ed vehicles. would, however, that could actually come out if the oh. uh, if the right. board of finance moves forward um, using prior year acquisition funds because the plan is the current truck that the public works foreman has would be passed on to the board of education because the truck is in um, good enough condition for what they would need it for rather than the Board of Ed going out and purchasing a new vehicle at this time. Lastly, the $220,000 at the end is for their annual technology uh, program. Um, they typically invest about that much money into the technology plan and they're keeping up with it. Uh, although they feel like they are slipping, it's what they we all can afford to give them. Um, more and more of their schooling is technology based. Um, so there it is. The um, your capital plan. yeah, the elementary school proposed construction initial bonding. That's I think closer to thirty-five. Well, it is, but what we have, what we're showing here is how much we plan to bond in in these fiscal years. Right, but the total is only thirty. Thirty. Right, but we've already bonded oh, some. Oh, So it. we've already bonded yep. some, and in addition to mm -hmm. that, some of it is going to be from school construction grants. Got it. Yep. All right. And we get some reimbursement so we don't have to bond some too, right? Correct. That's right. Yeah, so that's why it's not showing 37.5. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good point, though. Yep. Okay. So that's your, that's your capital improvement plan. We meet three or four times over the course of the fall and the late summer to put this together with various departments. Um, it, it, it is a plan. It doesn't mean we're authorizing any spending of any of this until we get into uh, appropriation process, which means it comes back to us for due diligence. I'll move to approve the 2019-2020 capital improvement plan as submitted. Second. A lot of good questions tonight. Thanks, gents. Any other questions? Did we have any changes in this? That we want to? Um, we had uh, it's still police station was. Yeah, the police station will get changed a bit. Um, I that, yeah. Yep, and the uh, Board of Finance is going to make some changes as well. Um, and we're still, pe what's also pending is the vote of the yes. Board of Finance going to town meeting, so a lot of this stuff gets actually moved around. There'll be a lot of savings off of the plan if uh, we can get this through. But should we put that, any of those changes in their approval? The police station from three to two? Um, with noted, with noted okay. changes, so, I guess. Yeah, motion my motion noted. will include with. With noted with edits and impossible purchase. I don't know. How would you say that? Well, I think we just if they pass it, they pass it. So yeah. we've approved it. We just don't have to yeah. execute it, right? Yeah, we're gonna be we'll be adopting it, right. uh, adapting it, accordingly. Okay. And I'll once it's final. We have so changes plan. coming anyways. We have okay. noted changes and possible edits in the future. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Um, can I go to ex officio reports? Sure. Is it possible? We boy, we jumped around a lot tonight. Yeah. Ex officio. Yeah, I think we are at ex officio. Yeah. Great. Uh, Mark, want to start? Yeah, um, planning has a meeting next week. Uh, they met today. They're going to go to public hearing for a, um, I think a five lot subdivision down in Black Point or Black Point. Um, the uh, town building commission met last month. Um, they're moving along. Um, there has been some discussion, some questions. They're Getting close. There was a lot of unexpected things uh, that, that came up. Windows, uh, Flanders. Uh, so they're pushing about uh, if everything gets approved, they're right at the limit. Um, so there's a question now of uh, 37.5 million was approved. Um, the initial school estimate was 35. There was some money in there for financing um, for Anna. So there's a question of is any of that available? 
and we met with the uh, with Ray, uh, Mr. Good. O'Connor. They said they were going to meet with people. Yep. They met, and, and, and so they are. They know they they can't ask for any more money, and they know they have. Okay, if we can't do the furniture now, we don't do the furniture now, and if we can't do the paving in the side parking lot, then we don't do the paving. Um, we leave it as the old paving. Um, so they know, and we're working on a forensic um, study on what money might be available in the financing. Okay. One point. Six million. Yeah, that was about one point six. Yeah, uh, in, in financing, and there's some other spots too. So, and they're waiting on the on the waterproofing, water sealing, yes. and some other things too. So, yeah, um, yeah, but they, they're comfortable that this project will come. It has to come in on time, um, yep. and it has to come in on budget. Period. There's no other way to do it. Yeah, so I can tell you they're doing a very good job holding that line. They sure and are. And especially with a lot of the uh, issues that came up with Lily B. Haynes. Um, that's all I have. Terrific. <clears throat> They'll be happy to have a new member. Okay. Um, Dan? Yeah. Uh, last night I attended the Historic Properties uh, Commission uh, meeting, and uh, Gary Geischel attended the meeting, and he's uh, volunteered to help uh, them with the grant process, and they're hopeful that with his help uh, they'll be able to uh, ascertain grants to help with uh, particularly the uh, uh, house on Plants Dam Road, the uh, Sam Smith house, and uh, maybe really get a jump start on, on getting that to where it needs to be. So they're very encouraged to have his help, and um, it sounds like he's very knowledgeable in that area, so we're hoping some good things will come of it. That's Great. It. Great. Mr. Uh, PD. Um, not, no ex officio, but a quick report from the Public Safety uh, Vision Committee. Uh, we had had two meetings. Uh, in our second meeting, we established two subcommittees, one to review the nine submittals to the RFQ, which came in on the 28th of March. Uh, and the second committee is to start working on the scope of work that we would be going out to, to bid at with the architectural firms. So the goal is to narrow the nine submittals down to three or potentially four that we would want to go out to bid with, have the scope of work, go out to bid, uh, get and receive those bids back. Uh, we've also had discussion that we, in the bid package, we'd want a needs assessment done by the, the winning firm, uh, uh, you know, just to validate uh, what we think our needs are, uh, let them use their expertise to make sure we're covering everything and then um, uh, come to us uh, with, a, uh, with a concept uh, to go execute the design uh, going forward. So our next meeting is on the 25th of this month, and at that time our goal is to have a recommendation from the subcommittee on the three or four that we'd, we'd go out to bid with and have our first draft of the scope of work that would be included in that bid package. Um, any information on the closing date? Uh, we're aiming for May 3rd. May 3rd? May 3rd. We're hoping to have uh, the last uh, couple of tests, and then the financing is, you know, can't rush the financing. We will have the money available uh, the last week of April, so we've scheduled for, for May 3rd. Okay. We have until, I think, the 29th or something, but we're trying to move the schedule up because it's all done, and why not? The sooner we get the keys to the building. So I heard something while well, they were moving out on May 11th. That's what someone stated. I thought right April there. 11th, but um, maybe, maybe I, I thought, thought it was okay. evident. But right. um, imminent. Imminent. okay, that's all I had to report. But they will be out on May 3rd for sure. Okay, thanks. There's um, there's a bunch of you can tell it's spring in Niantic because everything is popping as far as calendars and activities. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, say a special hello to Lynn Bodner. She uh, was a longtime secretary over the Board of Ed for, the, for you know, the executive secretary to the superintendent, and she has retired. So if you knew Lynn, um, she was a, a force in that office for, for several um, superintendents, and she served our town well. Um, C-SPAN comes to town tomorrow uh, to... Um, to honor three middle school students who put a video together 
Um, I was lucky enough to be in, included in the project, and um, and uh, they they got honorable mentions in a in a video national video project. Um, so they're literally coming to our town to uh, film them and do a little piece on them, and I'll be involved with that. Uh, Scott's Meats, long time business in our town up in Flanders. Um, is under some new ownership and they um, are go this Saturday you're all invited at three o'clock you're gonna have a ribbon cutting for the new kind of a grand reopening they have uh, some new owners in there and I'm sure there'll be some samples so samples samples Ooh, yeah, well, food. Yeah, I'll be there. food so <laughs> so, so, so so there you go I um, recommend the chicken cutlet sandwiches yeah yeah <laughs> right right so there are my gosh there are um, four bridge projects that are going to happen in this town. There's one at the end of Lover's Lane, Heritage Road area. We had a public hearing on that last night um, and um, we explained, uh, the state DOT came in and explained what they're going to do and um, we'll have more, they'll, they'll be well advertised what they're going to do. The Niantic River Bridge is going to be repainted and gutted and all the new mechanisms inside. There'll be a meeting on that, a public here, a public meeting for a presentation and information session and questions and answers on May 14th in this room. And you may make, want to make a note of it. You know, there's going to be a, um, a, a total closing of that at some point. Um, they can't keep moving the bridge up and down as they're trying to change the gears and the surfaces. So there'll be a detours, a full detour, and then there'll be alternating traffic sometimes and all that. Uh, that's supposed to start next summer. There's going to, that's the second bridge. The third bridge is um, over the uh, Four Mile River on 156 at the East Lime, Old Lime border. That, um, we had a, a meeting today with uh, DOT and they're gonna keep both lanes of traffic open. We've requested that, that's a major access point, especially evacuation route, especially when the highway shuts down, especially in the summer between the beaches. So um, they heard our request and when they were gonna go to an alternating traffic, we got them to um, go to full on open. Yes, they'll have to be close it down for a short period of time because there'll be some substantial changes to that bridge but it'll be open there's gonna they're gonna schedule a beginning of June meeting it hasn't been scheduled yet for a public hearing for an information session and the last bridge to talk about is exit 74 the right. big granddaddy of them all we had a um, a big session in here um, with department heads and DOT came down to talk about the schedule that is um, gonna go out for bid in 2021, the project's gonna start in 2021, according to the current schedule. It's a massive project um, of redoing the entire bridge underneath and on top. Flanders Road gets widened all the way to, Fl to Stop and Shop and to about the shack driveway. Um, turn lanes, um, median sometimes, so people can't take lefts where they're disrupting traffic now. The uh, mobile station, and the Starlight Motel um, will be um, taken by eminent domain. Uh, those are the only two businesses we'll lose in this project, and that's because they need a wide turn to get back up on the highway. The highway up top will have the two lanes still, and is being built to accommodate the third lane when necessary, but the acceleration lane, when you come up and around, if you can picture, turning around where mobile station is and kind of going up onto the highway, it will be almost like a frontage road. You won't be able to cut right into the, um, into the highway. It will almost be this acceleration lane, which will match up with the oncoming lanes coming from Starbucks, people coming from Niantic getting on the highway. That will merge first. And somewhere between exit 74 and exit 75, that traffic will merge back onto 95. So uh, there'll be almost like eight lanes of traffic up there, uh, which will substantially improve the mess that is uh, the, the lack of deceleration and acceleration lanes and all that traffic coming down from Old Lime and getting close to this highway split. They're trying to control that better. And they're also setting up for the third lane. 
Um, this project will not improve the 95-395 split. It's setting it up. That'll be, I mean, literally the trucks would go from this project, which will be a three-year project. It's setting it up to go. That'll be the next thing they do. So there's going to be two ramps heading northbound on 95? At exit 74. Yes. One from each side of the road. From each side of the road. They don't do. They, we won't have traffic crossing the road. Okay. They'll obviously the driving range will be also be uh, taken. Um, that would be the third business. I shouldn't forget them. Um, that the entrance to to Costco and the future project will be um, on the other side of that transformer across from um, what was Five Guys, which will be it's been rented, a noodle place. Noodles. That's the new it's thing, is the it noodle is. bowls. Yeah. You know, kind of a ramen, ramen. noodle yeah. thing. Ramen thing. It's, it's the thing, it's hot. And um, somebody rented that. Uh, so he's that space it's ramen noodles. And it's, different. it's, it's yeah. a spot. And it, that has Are they having ribbon out. cutting anytime soon? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when all, all right, the yeah, food yeah, things yeah. are. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, so that's. Mark, those can I ask you a question? Yeah. So those are three. Wow. So that that's. Are, is there any. Commercial land is going to be opened up, so we're losing three commercial properties. Is any land going to be opened up where the existing bridge is now? Is that going to no? What, so we're just so all this is coming. We're going to lose some properties. Yes. So we'll lose some tax. What we're gaining, we're but gaining is the access to, to Costco and Phase Two of Costco, which will be two times the size of Costco. And a safer way to get on and off the of 95. And, and a safer way. And, uh, Does Exit 75 on ramp get eliminated after 74 is done? No. So you're still going to have that quick crossover yeah. to get on 395. But days. when when the 395 95 uh, split gets reconfigured, that'll, that'll, that'll something will happen there. Okay, good. Something will happen. Um, as it is, they can't close that right now because too much traffic would come across into four into Flanders Four Corners right, right. and getting on the highway at exit 74, and it can't handle it right now. Right. Um, That'd be a three-year project that would start in 2021. So there's a lot of coordination, and we're going to make sure that. And DOT seems to be um, not seems to be there partnering with us and and soliciting our advice and questions and all that. Um, the town meeting is scheduled for uh, May 13th. That is, um, you know, the official town meeting where we adjourn to referendum. The referendum is May 23rd. It's a Thursday. Both of those dates are already set by charter. Um, that's what it is. Um, the Board of Finance has a public meeting. I don't know that it made my calendar, Sandy. They have a meeting at the middle school. Is that the 22nd? It's the 28th. 29th. The Board of Finance public hearing. We do two of those meetings. You know, we go over the budget twice, kind of. And that is at the East Lime High School Auditorium. But I think it's now at the middle school. It's been rescheduled to middle school. The 29th at 7 p.m. So you all would be encouraged to go to all those meetings. Uh, and I know you, you're interested in that anyway. I'll uh, not make this meeting any longer. I've had some doozies this week. Um, and the, uh, there is no uh, public comment. Is there... Um, there's communication from the tax assessor, the final grand list, and I think that was in your packet. Yes. I'll just make note of that. Is there any other selectman response or comments? If not, move to adjourn. Seconded. I'll second it. Though. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Thank you. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. <laughs>